Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my first ever year-end list. That's right, my top 10 of 2020. In the past, I've always kind of felt like I wasn't quite qualified to do a year-end list. I'm not a music journalist, and by no means have I heard even half of the releases that have come out this year, or had even time to spend with some of the ones that could have made it to this list. But I just figured, you know, I could have even done like a top 20 or top 30, but I just figured let's just keep it simple this first time. Top 10 with a few honorable mentions. So much good music this year, and so much, like I said, that could have made it to this list that I just haven't had enough time to spend on it. You know, for example, that new Witch Hazel, uh, that new Perdition Temple, which I didn't even know that Gene from Angel Corpse had a new band. Listened to the first two tracks of that one this morning, and holy shit, can't wait to delve into that one. Uh, that new Eternal Champion sounds really good, just haven't had enough time with it. Uh, that new Undeath, same. Uh, have a crew new, which is one that's making a lot of top lists this year and I uh, just haven't had time to get to it. And especially that new Oliver, I just have not gotten around to it. I love Oliver, I just have not gotten around to that new record. Uh, just a lot of stuff that could end up making to this list. But yeah, looking forward to delving into some of that stuff. And that's why I like your end lists, man. You know, uh, I, I always look forward to them. Uh, it just, it always gives me new stuff to check out. And I like other people's opinions to see what they've been listening to the most. There's so much music to go through that sometimes you just feel overwhelmed and you got to wait to the year end list so you can figure out what uh, everybody else thinks. So anyway, before we get to the top 10 and the honorable mentions, I just wanted to give sort of a quick eulogy to one of my favorite musicians that passed this year. Of course, we lost some greats, Neil Peart, Sean Reinhardt, and then all of a sudden Sean Malone. Losing two members of Cynic it was just such a huge blow for me. Cynic, I've said in the past, is one of my favorite bands of all time. And uh, losing Sean Malone, you know, he was one of these, one of the great bassists and hasn't really been too active the last few years. I mean, he's recorded on the last few Cynic releases, but um, kind of went under the radar, I think, for a lot of people. And for me, uh, just such a such a huge loss, man. So actually, that's what we're jamming right now is Gordian Knots, uh, Emergent. And Sean Malone had three releases. If you're a Cynic fan and have not heard some of Sean Malone's stuff, Gordian Knot and uh, Courtland, uh, these are worth seeking out. Not necessarily really sound like Cynic, but a lot of the Cynic guys are on these releases. Uh, this first one, the Cortland release, is, this is kind of more like a jazz kind of thing. Uh, but Reiner is actually on drums on this. And interestingly, Scott Burns produced this. Uh, came out probably in like 96 or 97 or something like that. Uh, but just really cool stuff. There's actually a, a cover song of a John Coltrane uh, track, Giant Steps. And they kind of interpret it in their own way. Really more kind of jazzy kind of style stuff, but then they released the two Gordian Knot albums, one and two, starting with, uh, I think this is the, oh yeah, the self-released and then Emergent. Uh, just both fantastic records. If you're a Cynic fan and you have not heard this, seek these out. There was talk that he was going to do a Gordian Knot 3 like years ago, and it just never happened, unfortunately. Uh, the debut came out probably like 98 or 99 and then emergent was 2003 but there's all kinds of musicians on this and this is this isn't wankery this is really just beautiful kind of instrumental music mostly bass driven but there's a lot of musicians Reinert is the main drummer on this one uh, you know there's a couple guys from dream theater fates warning on this one and then on emergent Reinert plays the drums on the first half and then bill bruford from king crimson plays on the second half uh, there's sick members on this, there's uh, tons of different musicians, but just so good, man. It's such a huge loss. A lot of uh, Chapman Stick style stuff like he was doing in Cynic and, uh, you know, I think he was a music professor for all those years, just not really being active, doing these Gordian Knot records and then coming back and doing the later Cynic releases. Huge loss. Rest in peace. All right, before we get to my top 10, let's do five honorable mentions that I picked for this list, starting with the new Wayfarer, Romance with Violence. Awesome album. I've already kind of talked about this one, but really, really happy to see the Denver scene thriving as it has been in the last few years. A lot of great bands coming out of Denver here in my home state of Colorado. And these guys doing this sort of American West concept with black metal, Americana and folk mixed, they really make it work. 
a lot of times when these black metal bands come out with these sort of concepts, it can come off as contrived. But these guys really sell it. They really make it work, and it, and it really does sound uh, just very cinematic in scope and really works well with the black metal style that they do on here. Really love this record. Awesome. Next up is the new Candice Viris with Independence to the Beast that was released on Binarune, which I'm sporting my awesome new Binarune hoodie, which came in the mail last week. Great, great album. I already kind of talked about this one in my last videos. And just uh, these guys have a very unique sound. I, I, I feel like they are unto themselves, especially mostly because of the vocals. But I like how every song is a little bit different. There's a lot of variation, uh, a lot of just a very dynamic record. And these guys are not getting talked about enough. I really look forward to see what they're going to do next. It took me a few listens to get into this one, but as I've listened to it more, I'm really excited for this band. I can't wait to see. Uh, apparently their next record is coming out pretty soon on 20 Bucks Spin. Can't wait to hear it. This is another just very unique and that this guy just melds all these different styles together. It really, really works. Uh, really awesome stuff. Really looking forward to the next full length. Uh, next up is the new Vader, Solitude Madness. Fucking Vader, man. This, this is a crusher, just like any Vader. I mean, they never really do any wrong, in my opinion. There's been so much great death metal this year. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of awesome stuff, but it's hard to decide what my favorite was. But there's just something about Vader that just really, really hits me good. I mean, that's just really, really sleek production. The drumming, uh, you know, a lot of the death metal bands that are coming out right now, it's cool that, you know, the drummers have kind of taken a step back and no longer trying to be the fastest drummer in the world and you know just doing what the song needs but this drummer man uh, he kind of has that sort of really fast but technical style really just works well with with this band that he's been on the last like two or three releases but uh, man fucking vader not much to say this is a banger it's only like 30 or 40 minutes nice and short good concise songs um love that cover art too so killer i really wish i'd have gotten this on vinyl but uh Fantastic, nonetheless, new Vader. Another absolute banger is the new Napalm. And uh, man, you know, they're not doing anything different. It's, you know, they've been consistent for the last five or six records. And, you know, what a perfect year for uh, a new Napalm record. And throws of joy in the jaws of defeatism. And, I mean, if I just want to put something on and just bang my fucking head, I mean, this is the record. So I also chose a best split EP, if you want to call it EPs, is the Panopticon and the Cha Twin split. Both awesome bands, and I think I already kind of talked about this one as well, but uh, the, 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 the Cha Twin side is so freaking good. All their, Everything they do is so freaking good, and I cannot wait for their... Apparently they're finishing up a new full length. Hopefully that's going to come out in 2021. Really, really stoked for that. Uh, the Panopticon side, so... You know, just a very emotional Panopticon song. My favorite thing about the Panopticon song is the freaking drumming, man. Austin is such an awesome drummer. And he just does this fill toward the end of the song. He's just so fucking killer. Uh, just awesome. What an amazing musician Austin is. But uh, two fucking great bands. Both of them coming out with new full legs in 2021, hopefully. So, uh, But definitely the best split EPs of the year for me. All right, so top 10 for me this year. Now, these are, for the most part, not in any specific order. Uh, starting with the new Paul Bearer. And, man, this is surprising, because honestly, when I first heard it, I was kind of like, eh, wasn't really sure if I liked it. But boy, it's a grower, and honestly, I can't stop listening to it. Every time I listen to it, I love it more and more. Uh, this band is just so uh, just overwhelming with emotion in their doom. And I'm not even really a big doom guy, but... I, a lot of people didn't like this record, have, have not liked what this band has become after you know their first two releases. But personally, uh, it's just so wrought with emotion and just awesome melody and just great songwriting. Uh, Brad Campbell has really come into his own as, a, as just an amazing vocalist, and uh, I just can't get enough of this record. All right, next up, and this is the only release that I don't actually have a physical copy of, but I did order the vinyl, and it is on the way, is the new Hallis with Conundrum. Holy shit, this record is so awesome. And I learned about these guys on yourlastrights.com. 
who I really love their year end lists. Uh, I love their reviews, and they also always have something for me to check out that I've never heard of. And they, they were pumping this record up big time, along with that new Witch Hazel, which I really like a lot too. I just haven't gotten around to it enough um, to include it here. But this new Hellas was, uh, you know, a no brainer for me uh, being on my year end list. It's just a fucking awesome, fantastic record. It's not metal at all. It's kind of just like uh, sort of 70s. Progressive, like space fantasy rock, sort of in the vein of yes, but uh, man, it's just really catchy and just instantly. The first time I listened to it, I was just hooked on it. So awesome. All right, next up is Atramentus with Stygian and Funeral Doom, and this is fucking awesome, crushing, epic record, man. Just, I mean, the def very definition of epic Funeral Doom. Uh, just love everything about this and I've talked about it before I'm not going to say too much about it I'm sure you've heard this if you haven't seek this out it's so good even if you're not really into funeral doom I think you could get into this so next up uh, the new cryptic shift visitations from Enceladus and man I can't get enough of this I've just been listening to it over and over again for a debut uh, just fantastic and you know when all the tech death stuff was coming out, you know, starting with like Necrophagist and Obscure and all that, I was really, really into that whole thing. I just felt like at the time, you know, I just felt like the, you know, the tech death stuff that was coming out just gave a real like legitimacy to metal in a way that I was able to defend it to people that weren't into metal and show that, hey, you know, this, there's real musicality to this and this is like, you know, really hard stuff to play. But then the whole tech death thing kind of got just too many bands and just to the point to where a lot of these bands were just being technical for technical sake and I just kind of fell off you know fell out of all that stuff but uh cryptic shift has kind of uh renewed my faith in sort of tech death and you know this has a lot more to offer than just tech death the last time I talked about it like I said it's uh, very much vector like vector style but just a little more death metal uh very clean polished uh sci-fi tech death um frontless bass just first track is like 30 minutes long and the title is so killer, Moonbelt Immolator. Three more tracks, uh, shorter length, but just an absolute banger of a record. Just really, really killer stuff. Definitely check this out if you haven't. Definitely one of my top 10 of the year. All right, uh, next up. And this one was kind of surprising to me. It's a new Catatonia. I love, love me some Catatonia. Like, I, like Enslaved, I pretty much like all the different eras of this band. And after coming off of such a strong record in The Fall of Hearts, God, I love that record. It was so good. I, I really love everything they do. Um, all their, their most recent stuff has been, been great. And after the last record, they had sort of taken a hiatus. I didn't even think they were going to come back. And all of a sudden, they, were, they had a new record. Uh, and the first time I listened to it, I wasn't too sure. But just like that Paul Bearer record, man, this one really grew on me. Um, City Burials. And, you know, they're not doing a whole lot different than they've done in the last couple records. It's just really, really well written. Um, you know, Jonas, man, he just sounds as good as ever. It's, it's a grower, for sure. All right, next up is Haken's Virus. And this was a no-brainer. Great, great album. Uh, when it comes to sort of, you know, progressive rock, it's easy for a lot of these bands to get a little too, too much wankery, dream theater. You know, I haven't really liked anything Dream Theater's done in many, many years. But uh, this band, they just have a knack for writing really good songs. And even when they do get really wankish, it's it's still really good. Um, fantastic, well-written, memorable, really good record. Love it. Next up, this was kind of a surprise for me. is the new Paradise Lost Obsidian. And I've never really been a big Paradise Lost fan. I just I I'm not really familiar with a lot of their old stuff. Um, I saw them live some years back, and I just I think it was with Catatonia, and they just didn't really do it for me at the time. But uh, man, this is awesome. It's obviously a really good mix of all their styles. The Death Doom. It's got a lot of clean vocals, very melodic, just uh, really concise, well written songs. I really, really, every time I listen to it, I like it a lot more, and uh, it definitely has prompted me to go back and check out Paradise Lost stuff that 
I had never, you know, I, I listened to Medusa. I didn't really get into that one. Gonna have to go back to it. Um, but yeah, you know, if you're a fan, if you can recommend to me what are your favorite Paradise Lost records, because I just, they've got a lot of stuff and there's just a lot of things that I missed out on. I'm definitely gonna go back. All right, next up, definitely my black metal record of the year is the new Paysage de Bear with I'm Wild. And I already talked about this in the last video. I don't need to go on to, about it too much. I love that artwork, it's just so cool. Uh, you know, I had a few minor gripes about this and it is a lot of music and hard to get through the whole thing in one sitting. But uh, nonetheless, the whole thing is, is fantastic. Every song is good. Um, you know, the gripes I had about it is I wish it was a little bit more dynamic and, you know, a lot of the songs kind of follow a similar template and uh, have sort of the same tempo and whatnot. But I think that was in intentional. Definitely have listened to this a lot this year. And I don't even know what to call this. Is it metal? Is it death metal? Is it progressive rock? I don't know. It's got all those things kind of just mixed together in a way that's very unique and different sounding. And if you like Morpus Cron, obviously that this guy took that and, you know, to another level. Uh, definitely has renewed my faith in any kind of sort of progressive death metal, if that's still a thing you know, since the old Opeth stuff, but uh, fantastic record. Definitely one of my favorite records of the year. All right, and like I said, most of these have not been in any order, but I think this is probably my record of the year, the new Bed Sore, Hypnagogic Hallucinations. Bed Sore, uh, dumb name, fucking great record. I don't know what it is about this, and I haven't really seen it on a lot of year-end lists, but um, there's just something about this that just really, really appeals to me. I. I love, it's another, it's kind of in the vein of that Swevin, just this sort of progressive death metal, not really sure what to call it, very weird, and you know, there's a lot of bands doing this sort of Lovecraft vibe, uh, or, or I should say Lovecraft concept, and uh, you know, usually it works, but for these guys, I think it really works for some reason in the music. If you've ever read Lovecraft, it kind of just, you know, it's beautiful, It's but it's uh, weird, and otherworldly and that's very much what this music sounds like definitely just kind of sweeps me away for some reason it's just uh, you know, for this band uh, being a debut I mean very very strong for a debut and I hope uh, bigger and better things are gonna come for this band I just I've listened to this so much and I just can't get enough of it all right you guys that's pretty much it let me know what your favorite releases are I'm gonna be watching everybody's videos keep them coming I love your endless there's so much more shit to check out so excited for all that stuff hope you guys have a much better year coming up uh you know i just almost hit 300 subscribers that's awesome thank you you guys if you dig my videos please subscribe just hit me a button just hit me a like uh you know definitely going to be focusing on some better hiking videos this year as well as you know collection updates and whatnot hope you're doing well cheers happy new years see you next time